Hey everyone, Sarah Zhang is a tech journalist who was put on the New York Times editorial board and much to the anger of noted blogger Andrew Sullivan who wrote an emotional and not really intelligent take on Zhang being appointed to the New York Times editorial board because Sullivan claims that Sarah is racist based on tweets that she put out between 2013 and 2015. Uh, I read what Mr. Sullivan had to say and then the tweets he referenced that she put out, and I have to agree with him, sort of. Here's why. It is not racist to call out someone who does something based on their race. In other words, if, if you're being treated inappropriately by someone who's white, because you're black, and maybe they don't understand your reference or take, then you say, hey, look, uh, white folks don't understand what a black person goes through, all right? Or someone white won't sometimes, you know, right? That's an observation based on your experience, and it's not saying that every white person is this, but in your experience, this white person did this or doesn't understand this. And it's a way of saying you want people to understand you who are different, and you could say, hey, look, others who are white do who are my friends, okay? That's a race-conscious analysis. You could take what I just said and replace it by saying, hey, look, some black folks don't understand this, and I've said that. Or, in the case of 2006 and um, a posting regarding crime in Oakland, I observed that at that time, it was sadly very common for uh, persons who were black, who were uh, younger, to feel like it was okay to pick on somebody white at night. That is a race conscious observation, okay? But it's far different if I make a blanket statement and say, white people are this or black people are that. That's what Sarah John did. That is racist. It gives no quarter. It gives no exception to anybody who might be right. We, I was taught, as I hope you were, that two wrongs don't make a right. Just because there are those out there who have been racist toward you as a person of color, as a black person or Asian, doesn't give you the right to be racist to them. It doesn't make the world better. It just makes pretty much guarantees that things are gonna be the way that they are. There's a saying that was popularized by First Lady Michelle Obama, which you probably know goes like this. When they go low, we go high. So in that vein, I encourage everyone to go high. And no, I don't mean smoke marijuana. I simply mean take the high road. It's adopt the, the New Testament rather than the Old. The Old Testament is, you know, an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, you hit me, I hit you back. That's the Old Testament. The New Testament is, hey, look, you might hit me, but I'm not going to hit you back. I will forgive you for the bad that you've done. Solomon missed the mark completely. And there are those, at, it seems, who are white, who don't understand that it's okay to point out what color someone is as a way of recognizing patterns based on color. Let's face it, we're not the same. And this idea that we're gonna have a colorblind society has always been and always will continue to be a silly idea. We must have a colorblind society, excuse me, we must have a society that is not colorblind in order to see patterns of racism. I'm gonna repeat that, we must have a society that is not colorblind, that sees color in order to see patterns of racism. You can't say that you're colorblind and then say, okay, because of his, what does that lead to? What does it mean? It means that you're trying to say that everybody's the same and they get treated the same way? That's not true. Or that you want everyone to have the same values? That's not gonna happen. Some of the people who say that, and I'm digressing for a point, are the same who will go overseas to another country, and look, they tend to be white of privilege, they can travel, right? Or 
those of us who are black, well, actually, it's, it's, it's a difference. I can't, I cannot same it. I can't make it same. There's a difference, all right? But there is that tendency through my life when someone white was in America, they were less likely to go to black New Orleans and learn about culture there than they were to go to Italy and learn about Italian culture. You see? Both are different. But going to learn about blacks in New Orleans for someone white to do was not considered a common thing. They should indeed be curious about someone different. But because blacks are putting down in America, that doesn't happen. You would say I'm going off the track and I'm not. I'm making a point. My point is this. If you don't want to look at racial differences or want to hear about them, you will never truly understand the kaleidoscope of both good, not just bad, because we hear about bad all the time, but also good experiences in the United States. The good news is that we have this, I call it, mixed middle of people. That's the new middle no one talks about. It's the same growing middle that put Barack Obama in office as the first African-American president in the United States in 2008. It's grown. And it's all over the country. It's not just, you know, relegated only to a city like Oakland. In fact, Oakland arguably has fallen behind racially. No. Now the United States is that great mixed middle. And in that, we enjoy each other's differences. We have people who are married, all kinds of combinations of couples and cultures, and it's beautiful. And none of those folks subordinates who they are for the other person. Indeed, it's the opposite. Their significant other loves them because they're different. They love their differences. And so I'm explaining to Mr. Sullivan, hey, look, you have to appreciate that Sir John came up in a different way and experienced a lot of racism. But is she right to then make a blanket statement about all people who are white? No. Is that racist? Yes. But is she correct to point out a characteristic that she's experienced that was done by someone right that she says is racist? Then the answer is yes in that. But she cannot then adopt a racist habit and make a blanket statement about people. That's wrong. It's okay to be race conscious, but that does not mean it's okay to be racist. It's a big difference.